today's video, I'm going to be showing you a little mermaid design that is aerial that switches from having legs to having a mermaid tail. And that's all done with a little magnet that's right at the base of her torso. So you can switch from like that just out of the ocean wearing a piece of beached fabric and a rope type of a look to having her tail, which is just, I love it. I think it is so cool and I love that switching element to it. <laughs> These really hold on to the nail very well, so that's really nice just because you don't have to worry about them falling off too easily and they're just a really fun technique. So I hope you guys love this as much as I do and as much as she does and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! So we're going to begin by sculpting an oceanic background, which is just one of my favorite backgrounds. I absolutely love the combination of the blues with that super glittery sandy color, which is what I put at the tip. And then the next layer is going to be an aqua color and it's got some really nice shimmer to it as well. And I'm going to blend that over so that it goes over the top of some of our sandy color with some of that sandy color kind of showing through it. And then the last color is going to be more of a sky blue. So I wanted this to be very soft background and I didn't want it to be very obviously like above the water or underwater. I want it to look either like it's the ocean floor with the ocean or the sandy beach with the sky in the background. So we just kind of kept it very simple and very soft in the background. Then I'm going to be encapsulating this with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong and smooth. And anytime I do a gradient with acrylic, my acrylic is very thin. I find it blends better that way, but that also isn't super strong. So we're going to need that layer of clear to make sure that this does have some nice strength on it so that it will not break after we get it all done. Then file the nail into shape with your e-file. Anytime a nail is this long, I do do a bulk of my filing with my e-file and then I do switch to a hand file just to make sure that the lines are all crisp and clean. So now with a kind of a nude color, I'm going to be sculpting, uh, sculpting Ariel's head and her neck and her torso. So I'm going to start with her face shape and her head, and then I'm going to do her torso. That bead was super dry. Sometimes if I pick up a bead like that, that was really way too dry for whatever reason. Then I'll go and I'll grab a really wet bead right afterwards and I'll lay them on top of each other. And the, some of the uh, monomer from the wet bead will seep into the really dry bead and it'll make them both just the right working texture. So that does work if you ever have that situation yourself and you need to do a little fixeroo with it. That is my method that seems to be pretty tried and true. Once you get to about the bottom of her torso, you're going to want to place that magnet into it. Make sure that where this bottom of the torso is, is underneath where her tail will be. So really have it kind of mapped out in your head where her tail starts so that you make sure that that is under, under the tail. And then after you have that part done, then you can go ahead and kind of start filling in more of the detail to her, to the rest of her body. So when I did this I didn't overdo like the sculpting of her facial features depending on the circumstances sometimes I really like to sculpt in as many facial features as I can do eyes nose ears lips toes not the toes are on a face but you get my drift I try to do as much detail with acrylic as feasibly possible for this particular design because we're we're doing her entire body for this the actual size of her head is very it's very small so to do all of those details with acrylic on just that little tiny face that we have sculpted would be extra difficult and would not look nearly as crisp and clean as doing it all with paint instead so in this particular circumstance circumstance oh words in me are not getting along today i would steer you towards doing it with paint afterwards that being said, if you really don't like working with paint and working with a brush just does not jive with what you like to do, then do it with acrylic. If that's your preference, that's kind of the biggest thing that I like to stress sometimes is that when you're watching a tutorial, whether it be mine or anyone else's, the way that anybody does something if that doesn't seem to work with you, but you feel like you can, you know, take the information from it and make it your own or do it your own way, that is perfect. And it, to me, that's the goal of watching a tutorial. It's not even necessarily so that you can replicate somebody else's work, but it's so that you can get ideas, get inspiration. Every time I watch a nail video or even just look at nail pictures online, I get excited about creating something. And that's the whole point of these videos, at least for me, for making them is that I hope that I can get somebody else excited about making art because making art is a magical experience, plainly, plainly put. So anywho, after we have her bodies done, 
not arms at all, but face, neck, and torso. Then you can go through and do her hair. Pick the brightest color of red acrylic that you have. For me, I find that red acrylics typically are either pink or they're more of a dark burgundy color. Getting that really bright brick red is a tricky, a tricky task. And if you guys do have one that you love that's like a really classic bright red, definitely link it to me in the description box below because I'm always in the market. The one that I'm using is from Double Dip and it's the brightest red that I've ever come across myself but it's still, I feel like I could use a brighter one. If anybody's ever got one that they think is just the cat's meow, let me know. But then after we have her hair done, I'm going to be sculpting her arms on a nail form backing just to the side of her. So instead of sculpting these directly on top where you're going to pick up some of that red pigment below, which is one problem with that. The other thing is, is that her hair has a texture to it underneath and the arm would display that. And you don't want that to happen. You want the arm to be just smooth and so if you sculpt them separately and then place them on top later then they just look a little bit a little bit better and the other benefit of doing this is that you can sculpt them so that they extend past the side wall of the nail and when you get that it just adds another extreme element to this and everything about this nail is pretty extreme with the switching elements and all that jazz so having this one more little bit that goes crazy is in my mind the way to go so after you have these little arms sculpted and her hands sculpted like i did the same thing with her face i did sculpt a little bit of detail into her hands but i am keeping it very minimal so I can add all those details in later with paint. But like I said, just a little bit into her hands, pretty much do her thumb separate from the fingers and try to get that to be a little bit more dimensional. But then once those are set up enough that you can take them off the nail from backing, glue them into place on the nail. So just dip the end of the arm about where the shoulder would hit into some nail glue, and then you can hold those in place until they kind of grip the nail. And once that happens, you can kind of hold them in place, like I said, I always can feel it when the nail glue starts to, I always call it gripping, when it starts to really grab onto what you're working on, then you can let go. But sometimes even at that point, they start to droop. So just make sure that the arms are nice and set up before you move on to this particular step, which is securing them with clear acrylic. The main reason you want to make sure that those arms were nice and secure prior to securing them with clear acrylic is that acrylic has monomer in it, which is a solvent. And to an extent, monomer will soften acrylic. So when you're doing something and it's a little bit uneven and it's a little bit wobbly, and then you put some wet acrylic on top of it, not only will the weight of that new bit of acrylic kind of make things bend a bit, especially in the case of something thin like these arms, but it'll soften them just enough that if they aren't already very secure, they will droop pretty much is is the issue so then we're going to smooth out the transition from her arm to shoulder and also add her ear with some more of that tan color and then with a lack a lilac or a lavender color we're going to be sculpting her seashell top i'd rather have had a purple that was slightly darker than the one that i used but i did fix that and do some color correcting with it in the end when i did the little details and defined the shell shape later so the great thing with this particular design is that the seashell portion doesn't have to come off so you don't have to worry about sculpting that piece to be removable when you switch her from more human styling to her mermaid self because her outfit her little beached up fabric outfit i don't even know what to call it it's like a it's like a piece of tarp almost that she wraps herself in completely covers up the seashells so you don't have to worry about them being removed so after that's done you're going to wrap the nail very tightly with some plastic wrap as tightly as you can possibly get it use a pinching tool to hold it in place if you have one available and then place another magnet on top of the one that's already in her torso and then with a aqua color we're going to be sculpting her her tail and for some odd reason i used my teeny tiny brush for this and it took me about 37 beads of acrylic to get her entire tail done and i don't know why i use such a small brush i would recommend using a size 8 for this if you are to recreate this design don't go with a tiny brush like i did because it would just make this whole process go a little bit quicker then again if you prefer to work with a really small brush because you have a little more control that works too i like to try to do things both with control and with efficiency so there's always a balance to try to find so we're going to be working on her tail you want the tip of the tail to end right about the tip of the nail now, depending on placement and size and length of the nail, you may find that that isn't quite how it works out. So however it works out for you is okay. But if you are trying to visually plan this out, it looks really aesthetically pleasing if the tail ends right about the tip of the nail. So keep adding these little bits of teal acrylic until you're happy with the shape of the tail. And once you're doing this, it is going to build up some thickness, especially if you're adding as many layers as I am. But that is okay because you do want it to go to the height of that magnet so that magnet isn't a bump that sticks up weird. You want that to just be kind of a smooth transition that's invisible. 
Once you have that done, grab a lighter shade, like an almost white light green, and you're going to be adding that top little bit of, I don't even know, is it like fin or what that's at the top of her tail? Add that little bit of trim on the top of her tail with that lighter greenish color. And that's the same color you're going to be using for the fins on the end of her tail. So sculpt those two little bits in place. And then we're going to be sculpting those fins on a nail form backing. So we're going to do that in just a second. Make sure that that looks nice and smooth. The saran wrap that's underneath all of this might make it a little bit rough and lumpy. So that when you are sculpting on top of everything, it has a slight kind of ripple look to it. So it may be just a little bit of more work to get that to all smooth out. Before we actually do our fins, I forgot this step. We're going to be adding a darker green kind of shadow around the outside of her tail. So you're going to be layering this on top of the aqua color. And the dark green that I'm using is semi sheer. And this one is another color from Double Dip. Most of what I'm using for this video is from Double Dip. But we're going to be doing that color. And I'm pretty sure this one is called Baby Rosa. 99% sure that one's Baby Rosa. But I will put all the color names in the description box below. So if you do want to know what all the colors I used, they will be all listed there. But using this color, it is the perfect one to just kind of add that glow to her tail, which makes it look a little bit more like it's got scales on it because scales are so reflective. But now we are going to be sculpting those fins for the tail on the end or on a nail form backing. So we're going to do one at a time. So there's the first one. And then after that one has pretty much set up and I am using a fast set monomer. So these set up very quickly and I can keep working without much leg time. We're going to place that first one on the nail and then kind of hold it up so that it doesn't, again, we're trying to prevent drooping here. Just hold it up until it sets up enough. This is so thin that it will take longer for it to become droopless if you, if you will. So if you want to, you can kind of set that on the side with something propping it up while you sculpt the other one. And that can make the process just go a little bit easier. So you don't have to hold it the entire time that that's curing. So sculpt the other fin, same thing, let that set up until it cures. And then once that is just set enough that it, it will hold its shape, you're going to want to slide your brush underneath it, pick it up, place it on the end of the tail. Same thing, kind of keep it up away from the droopy tendencies, secure it with a little bit more of that light colored acrylic. And then that nail or that tail is all done and you can, once it's all cured, you can pop it off of the saran wrap and remove it from the nail. And now we can do the next step. And this one we're doing with some uh, aluminum foil. And the reason we're doing aluminum foil is because you couldn't wrap the saran wrap tightly around her arms, whereas the aluminum foil, you can press around her arms. The harder part about doing it with the aluminum foil is you can't see through to see the nail underneath. But as long as you have a pretty good, if you're pretty visually, uh, you know, ex experienced and you can see through you can imagine you can see through the aluminum foil and see what's underneath this should go just fine for you so don't worry about it too much uh, we're going to be sculpting our two legs so once we have that all wrapped up with the aluminum foil sculpt the two legs with the same color of acrylic that you used for her face neck torso arms and sculpt them so if you look at the pictures of her she doesn't she's not too like steady on her feet very quickly at least in the beginning of this part where she has legs so don't make her feet like perfectly flat like she's standing straight on on the ground make it look like she's a little bit more leaning heavily on one foot versus the other and then after you have those down you can just place a bead of that same kind of tan color acrylic just about where the legs will attach and then place them down and that part where they're attaching doesn't have to be pretty whatsoever because it is all wrapped up in that piece of cloth that she is covered in so just secure that and secure that all the way up to where that magnet is so add some acrylic all the way up until you cover the magnet and it's all one piece it does not need to be pretty the only thing that really needs to look correct is her feet and her ankles and a little bit up her leg a little bit right now but then we're going to sculpt the first bits of the material on a nail form backing with an off-white color acrylic these are very similar to the shape of her tail her tail fins, just very basic, almost petal-like shapes. They don't have to be perfect. They don't even have to be smooth as far as the shapes of them go. They can be a little bit uneven, even uh, tattered if you want to make them look kind of like a tattered appearance. Once they start to set up, pick up one at a time and place them down so that the, dro the tips of the material kind of flare around her legs. There's that last one. And then once you have all of those in place, you can take that same color of off-white acrylic and start adding layers to the material. So she's got, it's kind of billowy. It sort of droops and it um, 
sort of flows around her body. And every time I see this part, it always gives me a moment of nostalgia because I can remember when I was a little girl going to hotels and they would always have, you know, the classic white hotel towel. And since I was so petite, they always were huge on me. And I would always pretend that I was some like high fashion designer and I would fashion those hotel towels around me in different ways to give me different types of dresses. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that, but for me, that was always one of those things that was a must do at a hotel. But we're going to add all of this material going around Ariel so that she has, has that kind of layered effect. And you can kind of visualize where the ropes are that are holding this up and use that to your advantage so that it looks like it's properly draped. And just add all of those layers. You do want to make sure, and this is one of those times where it would be nice to see through and be able to see your design underneath, but try to make sure that you will cover up her seashells so that her seashells won't show and that purple won't be visible. And like I said, if you can kind of visualize it, you should be just fine, but just sort of keep that in mind that you want to cover up those shells. Add a little bit more detail to the top of, of this material, and then you're going to go through with brown acrylic and add that rope. So your brown acrylic is a significantly darker color than the off-white, obviously. And so as you can see, even for me, there's a little bit of staining that happens on the off-white acrylic with the brown. When that happens, don't worry about it too much. Again, this is tattered material that she just found on the side of the ocean. It probably has plenty of stains on it. So that's kind of my thought. Plus, if there is just a little bit of brown staining here or there on it, for the most part, it's not even going to show, especially since at the end of this, you'll see that I do some outlining with brown acrylic or brown, uh, brown acrylic paint. And once you add those outlines with acrylic paint, those little bits of brown staining aren't hardly visible at all, unless you're looking for them and you know that they're there. So don't, don't sweat it. It's okay. And it's kind of inevitable. Brown acrylic is very pigmented and it just has a tendency to stain much like the red and black acrylic. If you are familiar with those particular joys of that color bleed. So I have a little knot on the one side and then some of the rope that's just hanging down from that knot. If you want to, you can add some texture to the rope. I did most of that painting in, but on that one piece, I figured I might as well since it wasn't right against some of the white acrylic layers. The ones that kind of I tucked in on the sides, I didn't want to do that with because I didn't want to add more color bleed than I had to. But now with some acrylic paint, we're going to be adding our details to our aerial. I did all of her outlining on her body with brown paint versus doing it with black. Most Disney characters, especially the princesses, have a very soft look to, look to them and are not outlined with black paint. They're outlined with colors that are complementary to the colors that are on them. So on Ariel's hair, they're outlined with a darker red instead of going with black. And same thing with her facial features and all of that jazz. And like with her seashells, we're going to be doing that with a darker purple. And then when you're doing your facial features, because you have no baseline sculpted in, all of this is what you're kind of finding as you go. So do that with the brown paint first, even on like her lips and her eyes, even though those will get some more color later, because the brown paint will act like your sketching phase and make it easier so that all of those shapes have a little bit of give so that if they're not quite right, you can adjust them later if you need to. And the brown paint won't show up nearly as much as if you went straight for black or straight for red. With a brighter shade of red paint, I am going to be adding some red highlights to her hair just to brighten those up a little bit. Like I said, red acrylic doesn't ever get quite as bright as my red acrylic paint does. So adding that little bit of red acrylic paint just makes everything a little bit more vibrant. And then we're going to be doing some blue in her eyes and then do go through and add some black details. You wanna make sure that there's some black around her eyes. Anytime you're painting anything with eyes, whether it be human or animal or alien, you want the eyes to really be a focal point because they're, you know, the windows to the soul. So do black outlines around them without much else as far as black outlining goes on the design. And that'll make the eyes really stand out and really pop and just be a vibrant element. I'm going to add a little bit more of a darker red to her lips just by mixing a touch of black paint into my red paint. And then I'm going to go through and just do a few more brown outlines wherever I feel they're needed and then mixing some red and some blue together I'm going to be doing my purple outlines on her seashells and for some reason I always have I have a box of acrylic paint that I use and I always had a dark purple in there and I don't know where it went I don't know if somebody borrowed it and didn't put it back so I had to mix mine but mixing paint is not a problem 
especially if you are somewhat experienced in it. It doesn't go too bad. After I added those shadows, I mixed a little white into my little purple color and then I got some highlights. Then apply some gel sealer over the background to make sure that it is nice and shiny and that will make all those shimmy col shimmery colors in the background just look so much more intense. And then after that's cured, some matte top coat over our aerial and now we can detail our tail. So this is pretty simple. I'm going to take a dark green color and I'm going to be adding a few outlines to the tail. Not much, and Ariel doesn't have individual scales that are sculpted in, which is part of the reason why those shimmery tail colors really did play well, just because I knew there wasn't going to be any extra scale detail added in. Then you're also going to want to add some details to that light green area on the top of her tail as well as on her fins. Just a couple little white lines almost like veining through them. Some matte top coat over the tail and now we can do those same details with the outfit. Again keeping it pretty light and simple. A few brown outlines here and there just to kind of play into that draping look and then some details on her toes. I did individualize each toe so that they had some more detail and then some outlines with brown paint just to around the legs in general and then a couple little black outlines on the rope not too much though keeping it simple and then some matte top coat over that and this is done and this nail is so much fun to play with you guys have no idea I love it so much there she is with her tail and they all very easily click into place when you sculpt them directly on top of it with the magnets in place if you are looking for magnets I do have them on my online store and I will put a link in the top of my description box so check for that I love using those magnets they're one of my favorite things to play around with so if you've ever thought of doing it check that out and I know you'll have fun with them too I hope you you guys love this design and I will see you guys next time. Bye!